Welcome to the clink, boys and girls. My name is Warden Bing. This is your new home. When you live under my roof, you live under my rules. Now I advise Wales Prisoner 90210. Hong, we got a runner. You have my permission to fire. <laughs> What's he in here for? Last time! My favorite son! How could you betray me like this? Men, bring me his head. Father, you killed my loved ones and threw my baby grandson in prison. But I still have you. It was a setup, you've got to believe me. I, I do believe you, son. Come here, I... My favorite son! How could you betray me like this? It was with tears in my eyes I learned the news of Crown Prince Ju's death. And so I'm dedicating this new palace to his memory, and as a promise to the people of China, that I will start being less of a d Who will be in charge of China when you die? Uh, no further questions. You know, it felt good to get it all off my chest like that. Feels like I'm forgetting something, though. Well, if you've forgotten it... It can't be that important. Dinner time! Coming! This is the life of Baby Xuan, which, yes, is actually a posthumous name that translates to responsible, and he had, like, three other names in his lifetime, but, you know, let's not make it more complicated than it needs to be. Thankfully for him, his life was saved by a prison warden with a heart three sizes too large. He was, well, spoiled isn't exactly the right word, but Warden Bing went out of his way to treat him as well as one can possibly be treated in an ancient prison. He confided in a pair of prisoners to become the young boy's wet nurses, even paying from his own salary to have them return after they they finished their sentences. He was almost like the father that boy never had. But back in the capital, the great-grandpa he did have had a very different approach to parenting. What say the magician's council today? Your Majesty, we are detecting some emperor auras coming from prison. We believe there may be a usurper. Which prison? You know, it's hard to say. Just like prisons in general. There's a future emperor in there somewhere. You know, it's days like these when I ask myself, what would Yi Zong do? Hi, hey, where do we keep the flamethrower? Behind the cabinet with the microwave, why? Message from the Emperor says we gotta kill all our prisoners. What? It'll just be a minute. Now hold on. These people have made some mistakes, but nothing is going to happen to them as long as they're living under my roof. Emperor's not gonna be happy. Then you put that thing down until you come back here with my death warrant. The warden wrote to the city government trying to give them custody of the kid about to be murdered, but they wouldn't take him. And pretty soon, he heard back from the emperor. He said you were right, actually. You're screwing with me. No, seriously. He said killing every inmate in China was a bad idea in hindsight. Now with that little scare behind him, the warden made up his mind to get this kid out, even if it meant never seeing the little tyke ever again. His great-grandmother and great-uncle were still alive, so after what I can only assume was a zany and hilarious prison heist in which the warden himself had to break someone out of his own prison without letting the other inmates catch on to what he was doing, young Xuan said goodbye to his surrogate guardian and began his new life as a commoner. Years later, he got an invitation to the palace. Now, meeting the Emperor face to face was a dangerous proposition, but if there's one thing that will 100% get you killed, it's refusing an Emperor's invitation. What's up? I'm the new Emperor. This is Huo Guang. He does all the actual work around here. I can't believe you're still alive, dude! Man, what a life! I can't believe I was in the dark for so long, but hey, I guess you were born in it, huh? I wanted to say sorry my dad locked you up, so to catch you up on being a royal and all, I brought you a tutor. And I bought you a wife. Congratulations. Their marriage actually turned out to be a loving one, and Xuan grew up to be a diligent learner with a deep love of Confucian classics and, go figure, a strong sense of social justice. The young emperor wasn't too bad himself, pretty clever for his age, but he died without warning. So at this point, there really aren't a lot of options for the next emperor. It ends up being this guy Liu He, but uh, remember how Emperor Wu used to fake those parties to hide his political ambitions? Grand Grand, I was just, uh, snorting coke from this young lady's bosom. 
Yeah, that was basically this guy, but for real. He was impeached, and I didn't even know you could impeach an emperor, after just 27 days on the throne, on 1127 different charges. And so, once again, there are no real options for replacements, except Schwan. From riches to rags and back again, Emperor Schwan turned out to be a great guy. He ruled well, he was one of very few absolute monarchs to really get the common people. He vassalized some of China's traditional enemies, he honored the people around him, and he gave Warden Bing a place in the palace for everything he did for him growing up. Only negative thing you could say about the Emperor was that he quoted way too much from that one Batman movie. Speaking of good leadership, Huo Guang, the regent who'd overseen the last Emperor's rule and helped Schwan acclimate to the throne, was finally ready to give up power and retire, a rare move among regents, which is exactly why Xuan didn't let him. He recognized talent and needed to keep him close. A fatal mistake. Huo Guang was still a good guy, don't get me wrong, but he would soon discover he was married to Lady Macbeth. We have a problem. Remember when I told you I was going to start selling taffy? And then, good doctor, when her child is born, you'll offer her this poison pill! What's that, honey? Uh, oyster dill! It's taffy! We're making taffy! Okay, dear. The Emperor will have to remarry, and with his true love deceased, my daughter shall become Empress at last, and my progeny shall rule this land! Can you picture the look on his face when his beloved eunuch's daughter will curl up and die? Pardon? Turnips and rye, dear! Turnips and rye! I thought strawberry s'mores sounded nice. I killed the Empress. You murdered the Empress?! I never wanted you to know! That damned Schwan! It was supposed to be foolproof! I'm sorry, your majesty. Your wife, she... She didn't make it. Oh my god. But she was so healthy after delivering. We'd better interrogate the doctors. How dare you! I'm telling his majesty! If he finds out about me, the law will have our entire family killed! You're in just as deep as I am. Villain! Thou hast made me a traitor! Now screw your courage to the sticking place and act the part! Is that a knife? Well, Huo Guang dies, making that whole character arc full of inner conflict almost entirely pointless, but Lady Huo got her wish of an empress in her family. Unfortunately, Xuan already had a son with his first wife and made him the heir. Lady Huo again hadn't thought this far ahead and proceeded to get all murdery. Mother, how nice to see you! The boy must die! Well, it wasn't long before rumors began to spread through the court, and before they made their way to Emperor Xuan, who seemed to lend them some credence. Little by little, he began to take the Huo family out of power, until... Exhibit A! Yes, twas I killed the Empress, but I think you'll all have the heart to forgive me when you see... Exhibit B! We sink or swim together! Which is why it's time for us to stick together like good Confucians and... Exhibit C! Overthrow the government! Yeah, um, they did not succeed. And Xuan killed the whole family because a bunch of the family was involved, because they knew the whole family would be killed. A very interesting little quirk of Confucian family values taken to their extreme. The one person to be spared was Empress Huo, who was simply locked in a palace far, far away, and the Emperor decided that his next wife would be one without any kids. But the all-important question, what does the kind and gracious Emperor do now that he's smited an entire family from the face of the earth? Didn't Jeremy the first time? He settles Xiongnu relations, rewards the faithful, takes care of his people, and lives happily ever after. 